Uh, quick question for the audience. Who has not heard me speak yet, by any chance? You have one, two, okay, all right, okay. Because I was going to open up the whole thing for question and answers otherwise. Uh, I'm Hayden Collins. Uh, I'm a staunch supporter of the veterans, veterans, hire a veteran program. I'm the only veteran in the race. I support veterans, hire a veteran, okay. A staunch supporter of supporting our veterans. I have two of my children that are fresh back from Iraq and Afghanistan, and they are uh, wounded nonetheless and doing better. They didn't lose any limbs or anything like that, but they're they're out there as well. So my family is represented to service to the Constitution. I myself have been uh, in several deployments and has held a rifle in combat more than once and have been under fire more than once. The good news is I brought all my people home, unscathed and unusual. On the civilian side, you'll find that my experience goes back to Westinghouse Nuclear Services Division to the Fortune 500 companies like Aspect Telecommunications, and also regions such as Colorado Education System, Department of Education for the state of Texas, and recently the Department of Education for the state of Indiana. Now, what I like to say is I serve everywhere and I bring you experience from combat zones and conference tables. Because all the experience that I do for these states, along with their education programs, their economic programs, and helping them with their budget, especially with facilities, because a lot of the work I do with the engineering services, and right now with the Department of Defense, deals a lot with budgetary considerations and facilities, controlling environments. And I have the best job a conservative could have contracting to the government. I, I got the government. <laughs> it's a great thing. And no matter what base I'm in in Georgia, I am there to cut. I am there to rein things in, to make things run better, run more efficient and I do more with less. Now the perfect example of that is Kadena Air Force Base that I did in Japan last year where they came in and didn't have enough budget money to run, they didn't have enough things to do with, they were losing money, they didn't know what they were gonna do with the base. And we went there and reduced their size by 20% and reduced their budget by 20% and they came out ahead. Not only they come out ahead, but they managed to get the whole 18th Airborne Wing in one section. So all of the 18th Airborne Wing is now in Okinawa. All because of the arrangements we made in the budgets and the conditions we set forth in the budgets. That's dealing with local Japanese culture, the local Japanese condition, and the Air Force Base, and along with, of course, the Secretary of the Air Force and all the other players in the game at the same time. Now, one of the things I like to talk about is economics, the other one's education, the last one's energy. And I've been producing that every debate I've gone to and all the materials we've sent out. Economics, I've put an economic plan online. An economic plan that's friendly to development authorities in each county and each district. The economic plan revolves around building industry out of, let's just say for the sake of discussion, a landfill gas generator. For those of you that don't know what that is, everybody has a landfill. And we're working on two of them right now in the state of Georgia. You put a landfill gas generator in, it sucks the methane out of the landfill. When it sucks the methane out of the landfill, you don't have to pay for natural gas to make your electricity. You're paying for methane. Well, who do you pay? You pay whoever owns the landfill. In this case, it's the county. So the county gets a revenue stream from the electricity that you're buying off the generator that's cheaper to make than it would be if it's natural gas or coal. Now here's the unique thing about it. Those cogeneration plants are pretty cool because if you can imagine hooking up a boiler to the exhaust of your car and that boiler generates steam and it does it for free because it just runs off the exhaust. You think about that for a second. Free steam. Caterpillars coming to Georgia. I wonder how many manufacturing facilities we can attract here by offering free steam to them if they bring their manufacturing companies here and all they do is pay for the maintenance, we'd probably get a buttload. But it'd be something else on the table, something else we can offer as a district to get more business to come here, especially manufacturing. Now education. I've submitted more than once and even spoke with individuals at the Capitol this past week about the Vision Bridge School bill. Now the Vision Bridge School is a program that I picked up evaluating the entire state of Colorado's educational system. And God bless those individuals in Colorado. But when we were done evaluating their system, the Vision School program is what they have in place to stop the dropout rate. And it's extremely effective. So they started a pilot program in Texas two years ago. I got to help start that program. It was really neat. In Texas, it's working as well. This last year, they were supposed to start it in Indiana. I want to bring the Vision Bridge School program here. Now, the unique thing about this is regardless of who you're listening to, everybody has government answers for government problems with big government solutions, okay? I'm bringing forth small business answers to government problems. We've laid off teachers, we have budget cuts in education, we have situations in education we don't like. Vision Bridge School program puts in Huntington, 
Ombudsman and Sylvan and brings those private companies into the school system. They take the daily rate so we don't lose the attendance from the public schools and we don't lose the funding from the public schools. And they educate those children on a one-on-one, -on -one, one on two basis. Even some of them online. Now the unique thing about this is teachers worry about how much they make in the private industry and in the public side. They have scales and so on and so forth. It's based on classroom size. There is no limit to online classroom size. Teachers can make as much money as they want to for as many students as they take in. And as long as they're successful with the students, the program works. There are teachers right now making close to $80,000 in other states using this program. That's a little bit more than the average teacher makes on the public side. Third part is energy. And I touched on that a little bit with the economic side because I do believe they go hand in hand. On the energy side, there are parts of Georgia that are getting the edge on us even now as we speak. In Dalton, Georgia, they have the second largest solar array in the state of Georgia and it's paid for within five years. They paid for it within five years. And how they did that is TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority, charges them 22 cents a kilowatt hour. Now we're paying about four to eight cents here, depending on the day, for our kilowatt hour. But it goes up about a penny and a half in the past year. It's looking like it's going to go up another penny next year. They paid for all their solar cells inside of five years. Now they're getting free electricity. Now if you're a business and you're getting free electricity, you just reduce the cost of doing business. You can change your hours, you can hire more people, you can do whatever is needed. But more importantly, you become more competitive in the market because you could lower your prices. The first, start, the first largest solar array is down towards Albany. The third one's being installed even as we speak in my hands on that one as well. In Veldasta, they have a program down there where they've combined the landfill gas generators and the solar cells and they're paying a penny and a half a kilowatt hour. Pretty close to it. Sometimes it's three cents, but nonetheless, these areas, LaGrange, don't let me forget LaGrange, these areas are going to have the edge of manufacturing because their cost of doing business is going to be cheaper. Now the way we can do this, the way this hits the Georgia General Assembly, the way it could really help, is if we allow power purchase agreements inside the state of Georgia so individual counties can do this and not call themselves municipalities or not call themselves power companies. And then Georgia Power can have a hand in it as well because we're not in business to put Georgia Power out of business. But simple power purchase agreements can reduce that cost of electricity and make a more business environment, friendly environment for lowering the cost of business and cost of doing business. It's economics, education, and energy. And that's the driving force of this whole effort. Now, a lot of questions, I'm, I'm going to get asked this when I go over there because the 411 Connector guys are right behind us, but everybody's wanting a solution for 411 Connector. And I've waited till about, what is it, six days before the election because I put this stuff online. And I had a solution for 411 Connector and a solution for cost as well. Some time ago, the gas tax in the state of Georgia used to go directly to the Department of Transportation, but now it goes to the, to the general fund. Everything goes to the general fund. What would it be like if the gas tax went back to the Department of Transportation instead of the general fund? There wouldn't be SPLOS decisions. There wouldn't be punishment for 30% for this or 10% for that. And it would be a steady stream to allow the DOT personnel to plan. They would have budgets in their hands. They would have an idea of what's coming up the following year and the past year based on history. And they would be able to plan their projects, if you will, and their proposals, not based on whether or not somebody voted for or not. It would be long term. And they will be able to put life cycles on the roads and repair things that needed to be repaired. <coughs> now that's written out. It is released. And I suggest everyone take a moment, if you could, go to HaydenCollins.org, take a great big look at it, and look at the proposals I put out for the economic side, the energy side, the education side, and the 411 connector for cost. But more importantly, guys, look at the new ideas. They're all from a business point of view. It's getting business involved in government, not government involved in business. Now, uh, I'm supposed to allow a few moments for questions, but God, yes. I will say up front, uh, my schedule is really tight. I cover five bases, basically, in the state of Georgia. Uh, this morning I was in Albany. I was uh, covering the Marine Corps base this morning. I found myself in Columbus this afternoon. Uh, tonight I'm here speaking, and by midnight tonight I will be back uh, probably just this side of Albany, and then back at the Marine Corps base tomorrow morning, and then I have another pass through bidding tomorrow afternoon and so this schedule it takes a lot of energy and this energy I'll put to work for you downtown so please questions yes I have a question yeah I know that you uh, <coughs> like the idea of the bridge schools yes 
You also like the idea of charter schools? Yes. And homeschooling? Prince George School District is a school district in Washington, D.C. You guys may have heard about it with President Obama when he killed the, the uh, voucher program, right? I evaluated that entire school district. I think it was the neatest thing since peanut butter. Now, some of their buildings are so old, the guys that built it may owe Jesus a few dollars. That's how old they are, okay? So it's decapitated. So instead of rebuilding some of the schools, what they did is they said, okay, we are going to set up a network between the homeschoolers, the people that are choosing their schools for their voucher program, and we're going to set up what they call correlated schools, which what it was is they were getting rid of their older schools. They built new ones and brought three schools together in the district. The way this worked, it was really kind of neat. If you were a homeschooler and you didn't want to go to a public school or anything like that, but you still wanted to use the voucher program or the school system program, they took the old school and made it a tutoring session. So any course that was offered there that you wanted to take, like I'm going to make this up, Physics 27, and you're homeschooling, you're not good at Physics 27, but you want your kid to take Physics 27, you could sign up for it, and sure enough, six weeks during the summer during homeschool, you can actually take your kid to that school get all the information and testing for Physics 27, since that's not your strong subject, and it would work. Now, the best part of that program was all the kids that had their vouchers that moved to the magnet schools, they wanted to do well, all those scores went up. The unique thing was, in all the schools they moved from, the classroom size became smaller, and their scores went up. <coughs> the tutors that were used there from the private industry were manipulated to be a part of the school. They had their own section of the school, and they actually tutored in the school, but were not a part of the school, like they were renting the space. So the voucher program worked, that magnet school worked, the scores went up across the board, and then the president killed it. And I think that had something to do with union issues. But that was a great school. It's Prince George School District. Uh, I evaluated with Parsons Engineering. So a wonderful scenario. We helped did their budget for the next 20 years. We set them out for what they needed for school budgets, for building materials, uh, for maintenance, deferred maintenance, and capital renewal. And not only did they take that and use it, but we're going back there within a year to do the whole thing again and update all their files. Please, wide open, guys. Sir. What part of reception to your ideas has met with uh, a lot of approval and what part of the opposition to the French did this? Um, the education side? Okay. All your ideas that you've Oh, okay. Well, um, Chevron Energy and BP Energy and a few other of the energy groups are looking for investments because they can make money on these investments. The landfill gas generator projects that I talked to you about are done with private investments. They're not done at the expense of the taxpayer. There's no risk to the taxpayer because as a power purchase agreement works, if you don't make the power, you don't get paid for it, you lose your investment. So the taxpayer is not at risk, okay? So we don't lose anything. All we have to do is buy the power at four cents. They make their money off the four cents. And at the end of the life cycle, we inherit the project and we inherit the money. That's received rather well because everybody at the table makes money, okay? The Vision Bridge School program, um, for those of you that have been following on Facebook and everywhere else, uh, I got invited to go to the Lieutenant Governor's office last week because they wanted to know how a guy who's only spent $200 on his campaign is doing so well. <laughs> and you can see my ethics report. I think we spent $87 when we sent the ethics report out. And I know it looks kind of goofy that we've only got like 1300 bucks in the account, considering everybody else has spent thousands and thousands and thousands, but my supporters uh, have given me everything free. All the printed materials are free. Uh, the signs we've used are, you know, everything's out there. And you'll find that my income contributions are extremely high, so all the support has been basically small businesses because they like the fact that somebody who's thinking for small business goes forward with small business. So the lieutenant governor, just to keep with your question here, uh, is open to the idea that he told me win, lose, or draw, he would still like to see something like that initiated. So win, lose, or draw, if the idea goes forward, Georgia wins. Okay, so I don't have a problem with that. Okay, uh, so the energy programs are easy on the taxpayer, no risk to the taxpayer. The education program can be well received. If we put some teachers back to work on the private side, that'll make me happy as well. Georgia Power's in with your ideas? Uh, Georgia Power's in on the ideas for the solar cells because they, yes. they have to sign for them. They have a monopoly. So the mandate that Georgia Power has, they've got almost a 30% mandate that they have to have with Green Power that they have to meet. And they really haven't got a lot of it. So they're looking for places to do it. My idea is if they do it here, we can get all of that 30% for us. None of the other counties can get it. None of the other districts can get it. But that power purchase agreement, using a power purchase agreement statewide, 
what will happen is instead of Chevron Energy taking the risk, or BP Oil taking the risk, Georgia Power will take the risk. Okay, so we don't lose either way. The taxpayers are not at risk. So the energy ideas are there. The economic ideas, I tried to work with the development authorities. They have a website out. They put out all their information on the development authorities. And the way the development authorities work and they negotiate their positions on how they get jobs and how they do uh, free ports and so forth, they work with the state development authority on that. When Caterpillar gets here, there is no doubt in my mind that other vendors are going to come along, other manufacturers are going to come along, and there's going to be such a competition in the state of Georgia that we want to look like we're the cheapest to do business, we want to look like we're in the best condition to do business, and we want to look like the most appropriate area to do business. Okay. Now, with all the Fortune 100 companies that we play with and work with, trust me, these guys are going to want somebody in front of them. They're going to want to see new ideas in front of them because they seen what's in Illinois and they left it. They don't want that same old stuff. So as far as the economics is concerned, a lot of the economic program that I put online is based on exactly what we have with the development authorities with the exception of how we're going to attract businesses in and what we're going to do with new energy to do it. I hope I got that. We covered it? Cool. Thank you, Hayden. Okay, guys, forgive me. We are going to boogie. Okay.